If you've watched our historical series before, you've probably heard of planes whose production spans over 20, 30, or even 50 years. But sadly, there are many that never progress beyond the prototype stage, and it's not always because they're experimental. Sometimes, even a well-designed project doesn't secure the necessary funding or support. When this happens, the best these aircraft can hope for is to be displayed in a museum or preserved in a private collection, with the faint hope that their innovations might be used in future projects. The story of today's plane is somewhat sad, as this bird didn't receive the appreciation and recognition it deserved. But don't you worry, this is a story with a happy ending. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in today's video, we explore the beauty of German engineering, Dornier Sea Star. Of course, building a plane is a resource-heavy task. I mean, financially, technically, and legally, it's very demanding. But this bird probably holds the record for the number of production challenges it faced. The story begins with Dornier Aircraft, the famous German aircraft manufacturer that designed and built the Dornier Doe X. If you're not familiar with this flying fortress, let me just mention that it had 12 engines, was 130 feet long, and its max weight was 56 tons. This blew my mind when I was researching Dornier. Sadly, this project didn't last long, and while Dornier made a few great military birds during World War II, after its end, Dornier had rough times and was forced to focus on smaller general aviation. Unfortunately, Claudius Dornier, the owner of Dornier, passed away, but his son Claudius Dornier Jr. continued his business, establishing two new companies, Claudius Dornier Aircraft and Dornier Composite Aircraft, in the late 1960s. Technically, it was just a matter of legal paperwork, as Dornier was still manufacturing the Doe 27 and Doe 28. In the late 1970s, Claudius' son, Conrado, entered the aviation scene. The young engineer proposed a concept of a utility seaplane, which was warmly welcomed by his father. But the company couldn't afford new endeavors, and Dornier Aircraft was just on the edge of bankruptcy at that time. Then Conrado founded his own company, Dornier Sea Wings, and began working on the first prototype. The proof-of-concept plane first took to the skies on August 17, 1984, from Hamburg. After its first successful flight, the work began on a second prototype, which was closer to the original design, larger, and made from composite materials. This led to its first flight on April 24, 1987, from a place named Oberpfaffenhofen. The full-scale development of the project was completed in 1991. By that time, three aircraft had been produced, and the Sea Star got its airworthiness certificate in Europe and the US. However, a lack of funding and interest from potential buyers halted the production, or to be fair, serial production didn't even start, as Dornier hadn't received a single order yet. If this were any other aircraft, we might roll the outro, as its fate seemed sealed. But as we all know, the Sea Star didn't give up so easily. After failing to fund the production themselves, Sea Wings started a source partnership around the world. In 1993, Dornier Sea Star and a consortium of Malaysian investors signed an agreement to create a joint venture, with an assembly of the Sea Star planned to take place at a factory in Malaysia. However, in July 1995, the Malaysian branch of Dornier announced that it would be closed until further notice due to a lack of capital investment. It was reported that investors had concerns about the project's technical and financial viability, such as obtaining internationally recognized certification for production in Malaysia. And once again, history nearly repeated itself. However, Dornier remained optimistic. By the time of the closure, all the manufacturing tools, molds, and fixtures needed for the aircraft's production had already been moved to Penang, Malaysia along with a prototype aircraft for sales demonstrations at Subang Airport in Selangor. Because of that, Dornier continued to focus on Asian market, but was also considering relocating production to another country. The search for partners was complicated by rumors that an additional 100 million US dollars was needed to complete the aircraft's development. Dornier denied these rumors a few times, 
And to me, it sounds like an absurdly large amount for nearly completed design, right? Anyhow, in 1998, Dornier announced a partnership with Hindustan Aeronautics, as there was a possibility for using Seastar in the Indian market as a utility aircraft. But, once again, it all halted. In 2003, one of the prototypes was rebuilt, and Dornier announced that despite all the financial difficulties they were facing for the last 10 years, they are evaluating potential production sites in Europe and Asia, aiming to begin the long-awaited serial production. Awaited by who, you may ask? Well, the research showed a global interest in 250 sea stars over the next 10 years. Additionally, the company would offer three different variants of the aircraft, each aimed at different market segments. An observation aircraft variant for the military, a 12-seat regional airliner designed for charter operators, and a six-seat configuration suitable for VIP clients. But, as you might expect, it was a flop once again. No Sea Stars were built in 2004, 2005, and so on, up until 2009, when Dornier finally made an official statement. Remember the rumored $100 million funding? Well, yeah, the company officially proved those were rumors, because now they were seeking $150 million to begin production. Inflation, you know. Later, they announced it was a mistake, and they needed just 65. Anyhow, two years passed by, and no plane had been built. In 2013, Seastar was acquired by Wuxi Communications from China, but the facilities remained in Germany with plans to build another one in China. Three years later, still no plane, but another announcement. Fuselage will be made by Diamond. Yeah, sounds cool, but Dornier, enough announcements, where's the plane? And finally, in 2018, the Chinese company invested $150 million, and in March 2020, the first sea star made it to the skies. What a turbulent story. Now, let's check this bird closer and see if it was worth all the hassle. As you already know, sea star is a flying boat with a high-mounted parasol wing. Traditionally, for seaplanes, Seastar's fuselage is made of composites, which are resistant to corrosion and less prone to leaks when compared to riveted metal. Unlike typical floats, which are often found on variants of planes that initially weren't intended to land on water, the Seastar has sponsons that also serve as fuel tanks, storing 363 gallons inside and giving the Seastar an even lower center of gravity. Besides adding stability on water and eliminating the need for wingtip floats, they also house landing gear when the plane is on water or in the sky. In terms of power, it's equipped with a pair of Pratt & Whitney Canada PT-6A engines, mounted in a single nacelle above the wings in a push-pull configuration. Its overall layout somewhat resembles the innovative of its time Dornier Doe J. Wall from 1924, and also its direct successor, the larger Dornier Doe 18 from the 1930s. The central location of both engines allows their weight to more effectively reduce any induced rolling movements, and it also protects the engines from water spray, reducing corrosion and eliminating asymmetric thrust. Two engines were necessary for this bird, as it's quite a big one. 42 feet in length with a wingspan of 58. Its max weight is 10,000 pounds, while the empty weight is just 6,000. Each of the two Pratt & Whitney PT-6As generates 650 horsepower and is equipped with five-bladed Macaulay prop, the front one slightly bigger than the rear one. This allows Seastar to cruise at 160 knots, while its max is at 180 knots. Of course, a pair of PT-6s is not the most environmentally friendly solution, and it needs a lot of fuel. So, the estimated max range is around 900 nautical miles. Unfortunately, I didn't find any exact numbers or anyone selling Seastar, but market researchers estimate the price of around 7 million. What a story! Seastar truly holds the record of challenges the plane would overcome to finally enter production. At least from those that we reviewed. Anyhow, you're welcome to share your own opinion about this bird in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.